Hey, everybody. It's great to see you all. It's great to see so much interest in all these recent developments with Civi Serum. I'm excited to talk to you about them. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Please keep yourself on mute. Um, in the right corner of your screen, you should see a little chat icon. You can open that up for the chat sidebar. Feel free to post any questions you have in there, uh, comments or anything else you have to share. And I'm here. Josh is here from the core team. Uh, we'll be both uh, monitoring that and responding as quickly as we can. Other people can jump in as well to the conversation. All right. So, hello everybody. I'm Coleman Watts from the Civi Serum core team here to talk to you today about new developments in Civi Serum that have been uh, a long time in coming. Um, we have um, some new extensions to show off that are now um, under rapid development. Uh, They're progressing very quickly. Uh, every single release of Civi Serum has new features um, and new, um, new things to look at in these two extensions, and they are Form Builder and Search Kit. So um, right now, both of those extensions are entering uh, a beta testing phase um, in which some the feature development is slowing down um, in some areas. There's a few more things that are needing to be added, um, but they're mostly functionally complete. And so I want to show you today what some of that functionality is, how you can play with it, um, how you can get involved in the feedback loop of um, reporting any issues you find or anything that seems to be missing, um, or what you're able to do with it. Um, and we'll circle back to that at the end of this conversation in terms of what um, community members can do to support these projects in terms of beta testing and code contributions and funding. Uh, and I'll also point some of that stuff out as we go along. But for now, let's get started. So uh, first of all, if you're going to try any of this, you need to be using the bleeding edge of Civi Serum, which is uh, version 5.35, which hasn't even been released as an RC yet, but will be later this week. Um, and so if you go to uh, download.civiserum.org, or sorry, civiserum.org.download, Uh, you'll find the page at the bottom under Release Candidates. So you can click here and get to uh, 5.35, um, which is currently a nightly. Like I said, later this week, it'll be in this section here, the RC section. You just click on the version um, for your CMS that you're using. And then again, in another month, it'll be stable but there will be new features, new bug fixes in the RCs and the nightlies uh, to check out. So uh, you'll want to keep up to date, but if you want to try any of this that I'm showing you today, you will need 5.35. Okay. So when you start off in Civi Serum, um, if you install the extensions, the Form Builder, which I think might be called AFORM, um, that stands for the Affable Administrative Angular Form Framework. Tim came up with that. Um, that is going to um, bring you to this screen right here. So um, it's, you need to find it. It's in Administer Customized Data and Screens Form Builder, or we have this handy new feature in the search bar in case you haven't seen this so far where you can just type in any menu item that you're looking for, it'll take you right here to Form Builder. Okay, so this is what you get when you install these extensions. Again, these extensions are shipped with Civi Serum uh, 5.35. You don't need to do anything to download them. You just need to go to the extension screen and enable them, um, both the Form Builder and the Form Builder administration uh, extension, which will give you this nice administration screen. And it's broken down by tabs. Um, and those tabs relate to different types of forms that you can build with this tool. Um, and so we'll go through some of the different tabs in a minute, but for now let's just look at this main one, Custom Forms. And this big button here, we can create a new custom form. And these are, and this is one of the areas that we need to develop more and soon, 
is what entities are supported. But for now, there's these basic ones. And so let's just take a look at creating a new form for an individual. So we'll click on this and it'll bring us to this form composer screen. Now, because I clicked on individual, I get one individual added to this form. And these are all of the elements and blocks and fields that I can use for this individual. So let's just take a look at something we're all familiar with, fields, um, for example, the birth date field. So we can add this into the form somewhere, um, maybe down here. Okay, and what you'll also notice is that these three fields, first name, middle name, and last name, all came as something called a block. So what are blocks? First of all, they show up right here at the top of the list. You can see the individual name is grayed out. It's already being used, and it contains these three fields. Now, if we wanted to add something else to this block, we can. Um, say the individual suffix field. We'll put it at the end. And now what we've done is we've overridden the block in, um, in the system for this particular form. What we could do is we could save that override and as it says right here, um, saving a block allows it to be reused across all forms and so if we update this block every form that we create from now on with a new individual or an existing one will have that suffix field in there as well. So um, I'm just going to say update it so you can see that. I'm going to save that. Okay, now let's take another block, this email. And what you'll notice about this is, one, it comes with the standard email fields, location type, is it the primary? Um, it also comes with the ability to repeat itself. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you have more than one email, you can add them to the form, um, and you can add those additional emails using the same block. So one person can fill out their email address and if they have another one, they can click on a button to add a new one. All right. So this is a basic form for an individual. What can we do with this form? Well, we can add it to a page. So we can say Civi Serum create individual and that's now gonna be a new page on my website. Um, and we can also add it to the dashboard so that your users can create whatever this form is for, in this case a person, um, from their home dashboard. I'm going to save this form and go back to the administration screen just to show you what we've done so far. Um, by the way, I am using the shortage theme on my site just for some consistent styling during the demo, it's not required. Um, now, as I mentioned when I was creating this form, let's take a look at blocks here because this is a powerful thing, um, which is that these blocks are actually forms that you can edit yourself. So remember how I updated the individual block. Let's go to edit that just by itself. This is what I did. I created the first name, middle name, last name, and suffix. If I was to say, you know what, I don't really need middle name, just delete this field from the block, save the block. Go back to Form Builder. Now let's take a look at the page that we created. There it is. First name, last name, suffix, because we deleted the middle name from that block. And this form, even though we didn't just update the form, it's automatically going to pull in whatever's in that block in real time. Birth date and email. Okay. So there's my form that I've created for myself. Um, 
what else can we do? Well, let's go back to Civi Serum home screen. Not that one, <laughs> the one for Civi Serum. There we go. Okay. So by default, the dashboard looks like this. We've got Civi Serum resources, Civi Serum news. Uh, let's just get rid of this dashlet because we've just created a demo form that we want to go right here. And there it is. First name, last name, suffix, birth date, email. And if we were to update this form over on our form administration screen, it would, of course, be changed on everybody's dashboard that's using it as well. All right. That's a quick rundown of the drag and drop interface of Form Builder. Let's take a look now at Search Kit because it's related. If you've installed that extension, you'll find Search Kit right here in the search menu. All right, I'm going to create a new search. And this is a very uh, very powerful um, search engine. You can start your search for just about anything in Civi CRM that has an API, which is pretty much everything. Um, for this demo, I'm going to start with contacts, but you'll see it's not just going to be contacts. So, let's search for contacts. And it's going to pull up everything in my sample, demo, uh, sample database, which is not very much data. So you'll just have to use your imagination when we look at some of these results. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is not just have the contact ID and display name. Let's just add a field here, um, say birth date. Okay, great. Now we've got that for the data that exists. Um, what about some other fields? What about email? Well, that's not actually a field on the contact. That's a separate record we can join it in with this with button. We want their emails. Okay. And we want to add that as a field. Email address. Great. Now, for those of you who used SQL before, you'll know why we now have some duplicate rows in the results because this contact has three email addresses. Um, and so they're going to show up three times. And for those that are familiar with SQL, you'll also know what you can do about that, which is that you can group the records by contact ID. Okay. And you'll notice that it automatically aggregated the email addresses into a list so the people that have more than one email address, it's going to show them together. Um, it could just pick one. Uh, we could just pick the primary email address. But for now, let's just go with this because I want to show you some more cool stuff. Let's pull in some more related records to these contacts. What about their contributions? Okay, um, and let's say this time it's required. We only want to search for contacts that have contributions. And we only want to search for contributions um, of financial type donation. Let's have a search for that. All right, that li limited the list, but we need to add our column. Um, let's say the total amount. Again, you'll remember that because we're grouping these contacts, it's going to show all of the total amounts in a list unless we do a different aggregation. In this case, what I really care about is the total. So let's do sum. And we'll find the sum of their total donations. All right, so that's pretty useful. What if we want to limit it to a certain time range? What if we want to find um, contributions that the uh, receive date 
is well, we could just pick a date with this calendar icon, but that wouldn't, um, and that could be work for a search for the moment, but what if we want this uh, search to be useful in the future as well? Well, we could do, say, a relative date, like before now, uh, one year. And we want the date to be less than that, so before one year ago. Now we can search. It's going to limit the results somewhat. Now, and this is a feature that I'm really excited about, Let's do that again. Let's pull in contract contributions to a second join onto the same table. And let's, this time, we're going to do the date received is going to be greater than a year ago. Okay, so now we have a list of their total donations before a year ago and their total contributions since then, um, since one year ago. Well, now let's say that now that we've got these aggregated columns, we can use what in SQL terms is the having clause, and what here is a filter. So let's filter on that first total amount, the prior to a year ago, and let's say that we care about donors who, donors who have donated more than 50 bucks. Um, but for the second, we want no. In other words, we want a list of donors who have donated 50 bucks a year ago or more, but haven't donated since then. And there it is. Now, there's our list of people who have donated in the past more than a year ago and have not donated at all since that time. That could be useful for somebody. Um, let's take a look at Oh good, this, this next question is, is it possible to relabel the columns? I love it. You're a step ahead of me. So this could be useful to somebody, but it also could be way too complicated for somebody um, you know, on your staff to come up with on their own. So what can we do to make this useful to the people that actually need it? Well, now that we've created this search, let's zoom out just a tiny bit. Hopefully you can still see that. Um, now that we've created this search, I'm going to give it a name. Our labs donors. And we could turn this into a smart group. That could be useful. Um, something else we could do is we can create one or more displays. Um, so anybody that's used views knows what a display is. Uh, let's create a table display, and let's give it a name. Um, let's say we want this many results, we want to show the pager. Um, and so this is the list of columns that's going to be in this table. Um, I don't really care about contact ID. Um, the display name is great, but we want to show it as a link to view that contact. Um, birth date is good. Email, we need uh, the old contributions before a year ago. The new contributions, that's going to be no. We don't need that column. And this, um, that's the name of that column. Let's preview this. Okay. Now we've got something that looks a lot more useful for somebody that would care about this. We can rename that column to something simpler. Display name, birth date, emails, total donated. That actually looks quite useful. Let's do something with that. We're going to save this saved search and go back to search kit. Okay. 
one sec. That was what I created when I was testing for this demo. All right, our labs donors. We've got one display that we just created. And if we click on that, that was the one that I called follow-ups needed. We click on that, we get to this page. So that page is something that we could copy and paste the link for. We could add it to the menu bar anywhere. Um, and we could send anybody to this link that has staff access to CBCRM. So um, that could be useful. Uh, they can click on the name. Um, if we had single contribution records in here, we could create links of those, and we could have a link to view that contribution or edit it, et cetera. Um, we can actually do even more than this. Because this page is nice, but you know, I told you to use your imagination with my little sample data set. What if this was hundreds or thousands or you know millions of records? Um, you know, it would be nice if those users had some filters to use. Back to our saved searches. And this is where this column, forms, comes in. Let's create a new form. And that link is actually going to take us back to Form Builder our familiar interface that we just used to create a contact form. Um, and we can embed that search display. That's what this gray box is, follow-ups needed. This is a representation of just a placeholder for this is going to be the display on the form. Um, all right, we're going to call it follow-ups. Uh, we're going to expose this at a, as a page. And we're going to enable it as a dashlet. Now let's take a look at our follow-ups needed. Um, I'm going to add a few elements to this form. Container. And let's say um, a few filters, like uh, the display name field. And what about, I don't know, uh, gender. Just anything that we might want to filter by. Cool, let's look at it. Back to Form Builder. Okay, so where's my form? Um, there's the demo form that I created at the beginning of this presentation. Um, well, this is the tab that we haven't explored yet, Search Displays. This is the form that we just created. Um, and we created a page for it, which we can take a look at now. All right, so there's our filters working in real time. Um, here's our females, here's our males. Well, I guess they're worse at donating. And for one little cherry on top, let's go back to our Civi Serum home screen. Well, we've already got that one demo form that we created. Let's make room for another. All right. There it is. So right there on the user's dashboard, a little styling issue with the page, or ignore that. Um, right there on the user's dashboard, they can do this filtering in real time find the donors that they need, whatever filters you want to add up here. Um, pull them right up, click on them, do the follow-up that they need. Uh, once that donation comes in, of course, that person will drop off of this list and it'll stay up to date in real time. It'll stay current with uh, the current year because we added that as a dynamic filter. Uh, and here's something that your staff or who, whatever fundraisers can use uh, without having to know any of that really complicated stuff we just did before. Um, that's for presumably you to know and to do. Um, all right, so that's my quick lightning demo of how to do some basic stuff with this. Obviously, these are very complicated tools. There's, you know, 
100 entities that are possible to use that you should go through and try. Um, the search kit really is quite flexible in doing many different kinds of entities. Uh, Form Builder, I would like to add more entities very soon um, and would love to get some community support with that. Um, let's take a look through some of these questions because you all have posted a lot. Okay, so there's a question here about relationships, and uh, it's a good question. I can just do a, a quick little um, a quick little thing here, just to show that yes, it does work with relationships. Um, so if we create a new search for contacts, and we want to add related contacts. Um, it'll just ask what relationship are you wanting to pull in? Um, and as usual, it can get really crazy complicated. You could have the relationship is one of many different types or is not one of another type, um, you know, or that that other contact, um, you know, needs to have a certain name or a certain, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, but uh, yes, it does work. Uh, it's similar to the way that we just pulled in two contributions, two, two contribution uh, joins. You can pull in as many related contact joins as you want to make your search as crazy as you want to. Oh, actions. Gosh, I forgot. Um, that's a great, great question. Um, let's just demo that real quick since it, since it came up in the questions. Uh, so let's go back to edit our lab donors. Okay, so right here in our main, you know, complicated search page, uh, we have these check boxes on the left, and we can uh, check those boxes as many of them as we want, um, and say, let's say we want to update all these contacts, communication preferences. Uh, let's say that they all want to be contacted by email. There you go. There's a bulk action. Now, um, that's for admins. The question was about for other users. So let's go back to our follow-ups needed display. And right here is enable actions. And that would show whatever user is looking at that table, whatever actions they have permission to use. Um, and again, it would expose those checkboxes on the side. Uh, we can preview that. It would look like this. And it would look like this, or for whatever your users had access to. Um, there is some discrepancy between this list of actions and the one on advanced search. Not all of them have been ported over yet. Um, that's another thing that the community could get involved with, which would be great. So there's a question about include versus exclude, and yes. Um, so I didn't really show this off because I was going fast. But <clears throat> in this where clause, there was another question about what's the difference between if and where and filter. Um, so where applies to the entire query. If just applies to this one thing that's being added. So we want to add contact emails if, say, the email is, um, you know, is their primary email. Um, and whereas where would filter the entire list. Um, and this uh, filter, i um, use that word again, there are synonyms in English, but in this screen, filter means do something to the results after you've done the whole query and done the aggregations. So that filter is useful for, say, you've, you've taken a bunch of contributions together and joined them into one column, and now we can filter that column and say the total needs to be, or the average, or, or whatever we've aggregated them as. Um, but this where clause, um, so 
come up with a quick example, um, you can do a lot with it. Um, so we said contact type. Contact type is this. We can do and, or, or not. So we can say contact type is um, a, a complicated way of saying contact type is individual would be to say not contact type is um, is organization or household that would that would do the same thing so we can create these not groups to exclude uh, certain query results and again this can get crazy complicated you can um, you know join your queries with or Uh, Rich is asking if there's hooks to create actions. Uh, let me look at that. It should be possible. Uh, another thing that's very possible is um, you can add these um, different types of displays. And right now what it ships with is a table display and a list display. Uh, I'd really love to get more displays in there. And that's very pluggable. So um, if you know some Angular code, um, coding, you can create an extension and just add a single Angular module to it to um, define a new type of display. It would be great to have a display of type graph. People have already talked about crazy things they could do with this, like a, a display of type autocomplete filter, um, so that you can create one of these searches and then um, add an autocomplete widget to a form that would use this search as the engine for, for running it. Yeah, a geo mapping display would be really great. We definitely need one of those. Um, and also, you know, charts, graphs, all that good stuff. So, so as we've been going along, I've been showing you what it can do and what it can't yet do, but what I really want it to be able to do soon. And so, ways to get involved. Uh, one big one is to just check out chat.civicrm.org and go to the search improvements channel and just type in that channel, I'd like to help. And someone will respond to you probably very quickly uh, and we can find ways for you to get plugged in. Another thing is to check out the Make It Happen page. Um, so all of this is being community funded you know, the funding for these projects is really driven by a lot of small donations. We've gotten a lot of $10 donations, and they add up to, um, to help make this stuff happen. Um, and, of course, you know, please download these beta releases. Uh, try them, play with them, break them, then come onto the Search Improvements channel. Um, or the, there's another one called uh, Dev Afform, which is the developer channel for people working on Form Builder. I'm on both channels, so you can reach me on either one. Um, but, uh, you know, jump on either of those channels and let us know how you broke it, and uh, we'll, we'll work on a fix together. Uh, there's a question, is this in the demo? It should be, um, although I'm not sure if the demo has these extensions enabled or not. Um, we can do a quick check. Right. Um, there's, there's advanced features that the forms can do in theory if you add a little HTML code to them or if we add the, you know, if we add that to the GUI um, for conditional logic, for example, which is, you know, already built into Angular and these forms are using Angular. So it's just a matter of exposing that to um, the GUI. It can be, um, it can be very, uh, complicated, the conditionals that you want to add. So if we do add GUI support for it, it probably won't cover every single thing that you could do with um, conditionals, but it would be a support. It would be a start. Uh, Alan asked if this code is exportable. So yeah, the, when you create a form, um, that's not saved in the database. That's saved on disk. Um, so it's saved as a HTML and JSON files, um, a JSON file to describe it, and an HTML file, which is the form itself. Um, and so 
Uh, and if an extension um, provides one or more forms because the extension has the code, you know, it, it includes those HTML and JSON files, then those would show up in the UI um, and then the user could click edit and if they save it, it's going to save a local copy Then they can click revert and it would go back to the, the version shipped by the extension. Um, the saved searches are in the database though. However, uh, when you run the search, you'll see here the query info. This is the, this is it. The search uses, you know, and this isn't a developer presentation, but I just, um, you know, none of this would be possible without API version four. So API v4 is able to do all of this crazy stuff with joins and filters, et cetera. And this entire search, all it is is this one API call. So you could copy and paste this API call and store it wherever you want. Uh, Joe's asking about the repo. Uh, the repo is CiviCRM core. These extensions are, are um, in the same Git repo as CiviCRM core. Um, the other thing you'll see in this query info is not just the API call, but the SQL that's been run. So if you're a SQL nerd, or if you just want to know why certain results came up and others didn't, um, you can find out exactly what SQL it's running. Uh, Rich is asking about where exists and where not exists. Um, are you talking about if fields are null or not, or if a join exists? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, and one thing that, that uh, you know, people have complained about a little bit, um, but this is really just a SQL thing, is that um, you know, null is not the same thing as empty in SQL. Um, so if you're saying, you know, a contribution, if you're saying I want a contribution to find everybody that's donated less than $50, you might get unexpected results. You might get a lot less than you expected because anybody that hasn't donated anything at all, that's null in the database. And so you'd have to use this, this or operator again um, to say anybody that's donated less than 50 bucks or anybody that's donated nothing. That's just how the database thinks about it. Okay, there's a question. Can I demo how to search for somebody who has not had an activity of type meeting in the past month? Okay. Uh, it's very, it's almost exactly the same as the demo. In fact, I don't necessarily need to go through it all because if you do what I just did of finding um, everybody with who did not make a contribution in the last year, it's the same exact thing except with an activity. So you just um, find the, the activity that you want. Um, and uh, um, where they have a certain role in it, you know, are they the assignee, are they the, the target? Um, the target is the person who's participated in the activity in civi parlance. Um, activity type, so, oops, is meeting, and then um, it would need to be in the last month, so activity date is going to be in here somewhere. Activity date, again, we use this relative thing, so before now, um, one month. And then we would just, um, we would just do a filter over here the same way that we did before, um, filter where the activity is null. Uh, and you can play with it. Um, my brain's starting to turn to mush, so whether it's optional or required, you just have to play with it and see if you get the results you want.
yeah, I might have gotten one of those operators backwards. Um, brain's getting tired, but you know, just just try it either way um, and get the you'll you'll get the result you want. Just just play with it for a minute. Um, it's again, it's it's very very similar to what I did with the contribution search. Yeah, I think I think Alan's right. It's, it should be optional. So anybody, I think we've uh, we've been talking. I've been talking for like forty minutes now. Um, are there questions that I missed? The stream went by a little fast. Um, or um, you know, Tim, if you want to jump in with any of these answers, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, well, since I'm a little bit of a geek, um, one thing that might be interesting to show just very quickly on the AFORM editor is that markup tab. Okay, sure. Um, it's sort of similar to how the search kit shows um, the API calls that are being used under the hood. The exactly. markup tab shows you what's uh, going on under the hood with this page layout. Uh, everything right. that you drag and drop creates tags in there. Um, mm -hmm. and there are a number of, uh, standard angular, uh, elements that you can mix into here, such as conditionals, um, on the block or conditional styling, um, conditional classes, that sort of thing. And right now you cannot edit this markup in this screen. There is an alternative extension that lets you edit the markup in the web UI, or you can edit it in the file system. Right, but as as people find, you know, additional tags and and things like conditionals um, useful, we hope to add them to the GUI so that um, exactly. you, don't have to, you don't have to edit code. Um, but Alan was asking where the forms are stored, and this is this is where they're stored. They're stored as HTML files um, with a little JSON file next to it for some metadata um, on the disk. Uh, I think there had been some questions. I don't know if you uh, had talked about it about from um, the rabbi uh, about doing an example search, someone who has not had an activity meeting. Okay. Um, I was trying to go through that quickly without like doing the whole thing, but. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I mean, I can, I can try it while people are asking other questions. I can just do this in the background and see if I can come up with the right answer. Uh, there's a question here about permissions, and uh, that is a work in progress. There is a permission option. Uh, there's some limited permission options, right? Uh, when you configure a form, there's a drop down that lets you say only display this form to somebody who has a given permission. However, the uh, uh, the data that you can access with the form is still constrained by the standard permission model in Civi. Um, and for a number of use cases, you actually need a bit of a privilege escalation where you're saying that somebody is allowed to work with field X because it is on this form and because they're permitted to do the form, right? We don't want to uh, restrict them to just what's available in the standard screens. Um, and we're trying to make a list of some of those escalation scenarios uh, just so that we can validate our list of tasks. It is in the wiki here and I will give you a link in one moment on the chat. Right. So if you can think of additional cases um, for setting permissions, for controlling security, please feel free to add them in here. All right. I don't think my sample data includes any meetings, so I'm just adding one to make sure that it gets um, excluded from the search. Um, 
so his name is exclude me and the meeting was ha happened today so we should now um okay let's see if we can get uh Contact type is individual. Okay, so exclude me is in here because we're looking for meetings that happened in the last month. And so now we should just be able to do um, group by contact ID and filter contact IDs is null and did I forget to add something? It should be the same as before. It should be we're pulling in activities that happened in the last month, and we want um, we want those IDs to be null. There, exclude me is gone. So here's a list of contacts that have not had a meeting in the last month. Nice. Cool. Um, there's a question about exploding, uh, exposing this in to public in WordPress. Um, so I do know that the forms have this little flag here where they enable front end styling um, to make the form match the front end of your website. In terms of displaying it on the front of WordPress, um, I don't, I'm not sure the answer. That's definitely, that's definitely a must have. So it's either in there now or it will be soon. Uh, Coleman, did, did you notice the questions about hooks and, um, actions? Basically, what if somebody wants to write an extension that's manipulating this stuff? Um, it depends on the action. The, uh, the action that I showed off with updating a bunch of contacts at once was happening through the API. So there's a bunch of API hooks already. Um, so you might be able to find one that suits your needs there. The other actions are, um, uh, let's just pause for a second. Um, they'll come up in a sec. The other actions um, are the old ones from um, advanced search, and I don't know that they have any hooks. It depends on what you're trying to do. So the implementation for a lot of the actions is the same as the implementation of the old action in mm -hmm. the standard screen. And so whatever hooks those were firing, you would still expect to fire. Yeah, and this uh, this screen does have, take a pretty generic approach to actions. So, any any uh, actions that are listed in the system will be picked up and and displayed here. And if you want to create a new action, you just have to decide how you want to do it. If you want to do it the quick form route, or if you want to do it um, the Angular route, and this this will support both. Um, and if you want, if you have something in mind and and want to just ping me on the search channel, we can take a look at the code and see. Um, how to stick it in there. Um, for if you want to go the Angular route, then I think you would create a little Angular extension um, that would load on the same page as search displays, and then it would um, it would provide that extra bit of logic for whatever action you wanted to do.
there was a question about um, relationship filtering and how that works with custom data. I'm guessing that you do a filter on the relationship and then you can join that with the custom data for the relationship. Relationship custom data should be exposed. I don't have any in my database at the moment, but when you when you do um, when you do related contacts, if you want to, you know, you can say you want this particular relationship type. You could also select some other fields on the relationship. Um, so. And that list there, that's showing you fields that are either on the relationship or on the related contact. Right, exactly. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of fields. Uh, you should be able to find what you're looking for, including custom fields. Um, find contacts who have opened an email in the last three months. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head where that data is stored in CV Serum. Um, there's some, there's some like email, uh, mailing open table, I think. It might just need an API. Yeah, um, I think that's probably right. I think it might not be exposed in the API right now. So API 4 doesn't support every single entity in the database yet. The goal is to support them all soon, but we, <laughs> we just want to add them in as we're adding and add tests for them and have them, have them be solid when we add them. So, uh, yeah, Rich, to, to your point, that is not a simple table to query. Um, and maybe it would wind up needing something similar to relationships where we had to create a sort of fake entity um, just for purposes of supporting that query. Yep. Yep, the relationship cache entity. Thanks for your donation, Joe. That's great. Um, there was a, another question that just popped up. Um, and it just dropped out of my head. So, uh, you would need a get oh. action and you would need metadata for any API to show up in that search, right? No, actually, it's gonna, it's gonna pull it. Yeah, if you create, that was the question, it was Alan's. If you, if you create a new custom API and an extension, it will just appear on the search, um, the search builder, unless you add, um, by default, they're, they exist, as long as they're like first class APIs and not declared as like, um, a, a bridge joiner or something like that, um, or a or an option list, you know, and like you know, API. Like all APIs, right? Like even if it's not an e SQL backed API, you can still query against it and do filtering and uh, whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's coins. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, even things like, actually, I think I excluded it because it was silly, but the Affform API, which is, which is an API that reads files, could be part of this. It doesn't have to be running SQL. It wouldn't be able to do some of the joins and stuff, but it can still right. work and display results. So, yeah, I'm really excited about all of this, and I'm excited to have all of you um, trying it out, participating, giving feedback, um, letting us know. Um, you know, please, I'll be on the, the search improvements channel uh, most every day and happy to chat with you about what you're using it for, um, what's, what the bottlenecks are for you, what we can do um, within reason to make it better. Cool. Thank you, Coleman. Yeah, thanks, everybody.
<laughs> and uh, onwards and upwards, and, and uh, see you on chat. We'll continue this discussion there. <laughs>